deals, but they build a business yes. that does deals. And actually, Russell Gray, who's with a group called the Real Estate Guys, we had lunch recently in Vancouver, and he was talking about you, and he was saying, yeah. well, what Ryan got is he finally, he's doing these different things, doing deals, but then he realized, like, oh, if I build a business that does deals, then it actually can run, and it's a subtle change there. But I want to get into that, but let's tell us a little bit about your background, kind of, you were a pilot, what, what made you want to do real estate? Like, how did you get started? Like, yeah, so I, I think it's important to talk about, um, I talked this morning to the race masters about, um, you know, nothing happens until a sale happens. And so I think looking back at my background in sales, um, anybody ever sold Cutco knives? <laughs> That's where I got, where I got my sales <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay. So there we go. There All we right. go. Um, and I, that's where I kind of started, and, and uh, I sold Cutco Knives, and I paid for all of my flight training. Uh, so it was kind of a means to an end to become a pilot, and uh, I was uh, a pilot six days after graduating from college at the airlines. And uh, it was really cool, it was really exciting, but um, it was really boring after a little while. So um, I started, my mind started racing about like what, what I could do with layovers and how I could uh, make additional income. So I actually started working part-time for the FAA as a consultant. It was an interesting time in 2009. There was a bad crash in Buffalo, and it was wide sweeping regulatory changes that happened on Capitol Hill. And I was in D.C., so I did a lot of regulatory affairs stuff. But I was still like in the E and the S quadrant for the cash flow quadrant. I was still an employee, exchanging time for money, and then working um, as a self-employed contractor. Maybe Red Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Yeah, really yeah. good. Yeah, you want some water. Some water. Oh, thank you. Um, so there's the second book called Cash Flow Quadrant, which is what he's talking about. So if you've read, if you haven't read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, read that. <laughs> but if you finish that, then read Cash Flow Quadrant, and it's awesome. It talks about some of this. So, so you were, yeah, you were a, a, a self-employed, or you were paid as a, a you know employee, self-employed yeah. kind of guy, and then you realize like, hey, I want more opportunities. And so, how did you like go from there to like, okay, I'm gonna did you go to meetups, or what did you do to start educating yourself? Um, I did absolutely nothing, actually. Um, I, <laughs> I can just, relate to that <laughs> for a long time. I, eventually, I did, but but no, I I literally bought my first house, uh, my wife and I in D.C. Um, after living in a small apartment. Um, we could look like geniuses because we just like watched the market, you know, go 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 and crash in 2009, um, and that had nothing to do with our timing. It had everything to do with us saving enough money and it just working out right when the market was kind of bottomed out. Um, so we bought our first house, we got it into the studs, and um, being the salesman that I am, every time there was a, it was kind of a changing neighborhood in Washington, D.C. and Southeast D.C., and uh, there was a house that was sale, for sale literally right next door. Every single time someone walked by to see the house, I would go outside and pretend to check my mail and, uh, and try to convince the person, try to strike up a conversation to convince the person to, to, to buy the house. Well, one day my business my now business partner walked down the street and I convinced him to buy the house. <laughs> He's a good sales guy. He's out there right now. Hey, you look like you just walk in the neighborhood. And you yeah. Buy oh, house. hey, yeah, come on in. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we convinced him to buy the house. Became good friends and neighbors, and then we actually our first flip was the house in between our houses, and then we did uh, we ended up including our own houses. We did four houses on that same block. And then we started scattering around DC, doing condo developments. We were taking like uh, brownstones and turning them into like multi-unit uh, condo developments. And man, that was a lot of brain damage. Um, and so, but we really had this vision. It's a lot of brain damage. Um, development in Washington DC. I don't know if anybody's ever done it before, but it is it is the hardest place to develop. You just Google like DCRA scams or DCRA disbanded for corruption. That's the time frame that we were developing in DC. So it was a very very difficult time. Uh, to navigate through. It was good if you knew your way around, it was bad if you were a new, new person. So, uh, But we transitioned to self-storage. We wanted to, uh, we had a mindset that we wanted to build a company. You know, you, you hear a lot of people say, you know, what comes first, the deal or the money? Right, the deal or the money, the deal or the money. And you realize it's always the money. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Because if you had $2 billion of your perfect deal, could you buy it? Could you buy it? I, I couldn't. Not exactly. You, so you, you could probably so, buy it, right? No, I, I, I couldn't either. But like, that's because that's because you don't have enough money, right? Like, if you had you, you people say, "Oh, well, I have deal flow problems." It's like, no, you you know, yeah. if you if you had a huge, and so I say the dealer of the money, I say the business, right? Because you have a business that can can handle it, and your business needs a lot of money to survive. So, and, and this is really true. We talk about this for those that are new as well. There's usually two ways people get into doing larger deals. It's either raising money, or it's finding deals. 
And the reason is, you know, we say, well, I want to operate a deal and do it all myself. A lot of times people don't want to trust someone who's never operated a large deal with millions of dollars to go operate this large deal. So to get started, some people do smaller units, kind of work their way up. But the nice thing about raising money, and that's what, basically what we do, is that you, once you learn how to raise money, you can raise money for other people's deals. You can raise money for, uh, we raise it for car washes and ATM machines. We have an oil and gas speculative deal coming up that I'm really excited about. So there's other things you can do with it, but you're right, once you have the money, then you can dictate the terms, right? Because exactly. Like, yep. You can raise five million, well, I want special terms, or you know, whatever it is. Yep, Ex exactly. And so we picked self-storage as our first vertical, uh, and um, it, it's been great. It's been a great asset class. We were the 40th largest owner of self-storage down in the United States, uh, 40th largest operator and owner of storage, and uh, we operate under our own brand now called Free Up Storage. And now we've taken a completely different mindset where instead of thinking of ourselves as a self-storage company or you know we do self-storage,